Hello. Hello. Uh, so I didn't see Harstum on E when I went back. Uh, yeah, because he actually came over here and then didn't join the channel, ended up talking to himself, and he is balls. He's b Oh, his name is literally Balls. He's also Balls. Like, Balls to you, Harstum, but whatever. Um, Ziz, Zai's donated five dollars. Do you want to do this one? Because you do shout out. You fucking juicy Rifkin, you fucking juicy mate. Fucking tell him, mate. Oh, so juicy. I, I I really don't know what accent was supposed to be used there, so I'm <laughs> glad he just chose one and ran with it. I, I was like, you know what? Like, I'm just gonna yell and read it, kind of phonetically. It came out Irish, so you know, whatever. Good job. Good job, man. Stuff. Yeah. Um, well, we're finally in a game. We finally have everyone together on the correct server in the correct place, and Balls just needs to go ahead and pick Protoss, not Terran. All right. And, uh, cool. Yeah, totes cool. Super roller coaster start to this cast. I know. It's been a whirlwind of emotions. <laughs> this is why you was <laughs> This is this is terrible. It's actually I think one of the worst starts, like including all the veto processes I think. Oh god. <laughs> Lately it's just been terrible with that, especially yeah. This is all right. pretty awkward. Okay. It took a little bit to get this started. We had some issues on Twitch, but now it looks like we're finally ready to go. It's game number one of the Corsair Cup. Big shout out to Corsair, our sponsors, for making all this possible. Make sure to check out the links down below and click on their stuff to look at them, guys, because without Corsair, we wouldn't be able to put on four awesome tournaments every month. Yep. And what about load time? we're loading. Yeah, it looks like Harsom's going to drop out, actually. He hasn't even started loading. Yeah, so <laughs> for those who don't know, again, Harsom is, for whatever reason, under the tag of balls. Uh, I guess that's just like his silly NA account, or uh, I don't know what the deal is, because everyone has name changes nowadays. <laughs> Error, okay, good. You didn't drop oh, out. Good to know. We, we all Gucci. Cute. All right. Then let's get this party started. You guys are tuning in to the Corsair Cup. Spawning here on the bottom right side of Frost. He's going to be the Blue Protoss Balls. Better known as Invasions Harstum. And in the bottom left, his teammates, it's the Red Terran Major. All right, so Major actually had a really good tournament run yesterday in the Matcherino Cup. He, of course, eventually had a bit of a hard time versus Zerg later on, but Protoss, we didn't get to see a whole hell of a lot of. In fact, I think there was like one Protoss who signed up for the Cup, so I don't really <laughs> know where he sits in the matchup. But Harstum just won home story cup like this past weekend mm -hmm. so we you know what that means right he's not yet swimming in money but will be in approximately six months no it means he's definitely gonna lose a weekly cup oh. like Virgo did after winning dream Hack. <laughs> everyone <laughs> else right. did after winning like every big event should that, should that be the won. new curse there's the group stage curse and then there's the tournament to weekly cup curse <laughs> Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how much of an actual curse it is, but it's just kind of funny because you, you you almost feel really bad for them because you're like, yeah, I'm top of the world. I can't beat a fucking best of three and yeah, save my life. Yeah. Of course, I mean, I guess there's a lot to consider for that. Whenever they come back from a tournament, they're, they're literally coming back from a tournament and whether that's, you know, another year, you know, country in Europe and it's not that bad of a train trip, it's still like, you know, traveling. For Harstum, he actually didn't just go, you know, back to his home. In Europe, he actually went to California. So he had a pretty long trip. Europe to California is pretty damn long, I do believe. It's like seven hours from me on the East Coast. It's going to be like, what, 12 hours to the West Coast? And he might be affected by that. It's Wednesday. I think he said like a day, I think, to probably like settle down and prepare, get his computer set up. But it still probably could affect him. And if he loses, I I'd pin some of that on it, but I'd also pin some of it on apparently this newfangled um, curse that we apparently now have. I just had like a kind of mind-blowing moment here What's it that? takes more time to travel through a time zone than the actual time zone changes from point to point is that really a mind blow though i guess it's, it's more of a shower thought i guess yeah i think it's more of a shower thought also right. the chat loved your shout out 
Oh, that whatever impression. Yeah, you guys don't understand. The text for this was exactly as I read it. It was. Out loud. Yeah, it was pretty close. As I said, I, I didn't know what accent it was, but I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, gosh. Yeah, I could see that. Well, the engineering bit block comes down. This is something that has, for whatever strange reason, become classically a choice to go with. Yeah. Uh, in some instances, we've we've certainly seen the benefits to it, especially in regards to. Um, Delaying the Mothership core push and stopping things from getting too cheesy. And maybe that's a little bit of what Major's worried about. But Harsom really is not the type of guy to hit you with the pylon at the bottom of your ramp. He's not the type of guy to get that Mothership core across the map early. And that's not saying anything good or bad about him. It's just his play style from what we've seen many times. Yeah, he's not Mana. <laughs> we see that at least once every best of three, so... Yeah, I don't think it's that much to worry about, but, you know, I can see it's, it's keeping the Adept at home. The Reaper it has to, you know, worry about, like, one less shot from that Adept of the Mothership if it's if it's focusing on the Engineering Bay. It's annoying. And it did start to block out a little bit of mining as they went, like, behind the minerals instead of front. And it, it's just it's very annoying. But I was like, what's the second thing you're doing for? Well, it's actually because he was, you know, blocking. And so this one's just for the plus one, as you would expect. Major kind of going that middle of the road choice, two barracks, and then the factory coming down. Harsum has Blink on the way, and while it's only two gateways, and you know, it could turn into a macro game, and it, it probably will, um, it also could be a little bit of pressure. And that was weird. Okay. Yeah, maybe just a small hiccup. Um, but yeah, Blink is actually not so crazy to me because of two different reasons. Number one being like, okay, it's Frost, old school Blink days, things still work here. Uh, you've got that really annoying ledge by the Terran, uh, kind of to the right of Major, like... You can blink in from any angle, and it really sucks defending against that. But most importantly, Major is a very drop-heavy player as well. And Blink is something that's going to help Harsom catch those drops, catch the Liberators, and maneuver around the way he would normally perhaps not be able to. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely like Blink, um, but I'm always a little bit scared for the Terran, because even if it is three gateways and it's just a very light pressure... If they don't have a bunker, which Major doesn't, if they don't have anything in the high ground, which he has a couple of things, I think more for an Oracle than for Blink, because he hasn't really been getting a lot of scouting. Yeah, he has not. Um, you know, then that's like maybe stim snipes, you know, if things really go badly, or it's just free pickings on Marines, because you can stay out here and, and Blink back. The scan finally goes down, though, and sees the entirety of Harsom's base. He's, I think, the Robo and the, the extra gateways, and, of course, the toilet counts are researching. And I think on Frost, it's definitely a good guess to be Blink. I mean, either way, you know it's just, at the very minimum, not going to be something weird like a Stargate opener or otherwise seeing that. So even if you don't know what it is, or let's say you're not smart enough to guess that it's Blink versus a resonating glaives it's still fine because you just you know it's not a stargate so something that is a little more awkward to deal with yeah uh production picking up for major he's gonna be swapping that starport over get that reactor down start pumping on some meta max yep coming over now major server yeah if he wasn't if he did think it was like if it was a stargate build and he denies the oracle with the missile turret then he could probably push out right now and then have the medevax join up with him as he moves out but since it was a toilet council and he knows that like running into what is potentially and actually will be blank stalkers is a little risky um just because they'll get a lot of pot shots off on you and maybe force a stim that you really don't want to use quite yet so waiting for those and then pushing out as they're about to uh, return uh, it also helped him here, as that war prison was trying to time out with it. He scouted with the Reaper, decided to move out anyway. That's... I don't... Um... It's one of those things, like, did he see it, right? Like, we know that it was revealed, huh. but I don't know if he noticed it. So war prison kind of comes in, comes out. He sees the army in the middle of the map. He had the Watchtower, backs away with that Stalker, and now Balls, remember, is Harstum, uh, doesn't really have, I think, that much to fight with. The force fields have to be really good. I don't even know if you go for Garden Shield on this one. Goes for the Garden Shield, focuses it down immediately. The Immortal falls like nobody's business. No pylons, no overcharges going off. Major just stims in here with no contest. Nothing to push back and harsh them. Oh, how do you even hold against this? Mothership well, 4 goes down. Lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, GG. Very abrupt, very quick game one, but GG. The curse is real, yo. Yeah, apparently. Um... That was I'm gonna be harsh on Harsom for a second before coming up with excuses for him. But that was one of those pushes that he saw coming. He had one or two options to prepare against it, and one of them being like dropping the warp prism and, and doing whatever damage you could with that. But also since he knew it was coming, I actually put down pylons in front of his army, which is like kind of like Babby's first day at Protoss. <laughs> um 
but he, I guess, forgot or really thought that his Blink Stalkers would be enough, which is just very odd. Um, I actually don't know what was going through his mind, other than maybe he was hoping Major would go for a direct line to the third base and not to the middle of his third and natural. Because the pylons were at the third base, but his militia core wasn't, so I, I don't even know about that. <laughs> that was just really weird. Um, the second map's going to be Dusk Towers, uh, another, you know, big macro map. Hopefully Harsom shakes off whatever rust just affected him there. I mean, it's one one game. Yeah, it's not nothing to start going yeah. off Freud on just yet. Yeah, and it's, it's not his first series, but he did just face someone I think that was, you know, probably a lot easier. Again, what a microbe is watching, no, no offense, but... Um, going up for, against Major now, I mean, this this could have been like a semi-final, even the finals match, and it would have been a very tough best of five, but having a best of three and, you know, so early on kind of sucks, but it is a big jump to remember like, oh, right, like this guy's timings are going to be really crisp. Plus, you know, Terrence is Imba, right? Also that, yeah. That's, yeah, for sure. I mean, that was such a cheesy maneuver, what, what Major did, you know, the clean macro. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I can't even believe he would have the audacity to pull out a build like yeah, that. Yeah, it really wasn't anything fancy. I mean, I think, you know, his third CC obviously wasn't, like, super, super early, but it wasn't like he went for five barracks, like, surprise, you know, seven barracks or some shit like that, right? Like, it was a, it was a very normal build, and I'm certain Harsim's a little like, oh, I wish people didn't see that right now, but... Let's see what he can do here on his map choice. In the top right, now up 1-0. It's Invasion Esports Major. And of course, his teammates currently flying under the tag of balls. They're playing like them. Oh, <laughs> it's going to oh. be the red Protoss Harstum. This, I feel like you, there's a lot of people out there who might not know Harstum, right? Or his personality. And they just know him as a home strike up champion and a really good Protoss. And like this meme everyone jokes about. They yeah. come into this and they expect something professional, but instead it's balls. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like, in a very similar way, that is also base trade TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, uh, he fits well with us. Yeah. I already talked about Harsim, I guess. Was it yesterday? Why, why were we talking about Harsim yesterday? I don't, I don't you know. you got a crush on him? I don't know. Yeah, obviously. I guess we're Calm talking about Cup. I think we're talking about just if you watched Homestray Cup on Monday. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. And we brought up, you know, Scarlet and, and Harsom's games and whatnot. But anyway, I already talked about how, like, I, I really didn't know what to expect from this guy when I first met him. But he was, like, super chill and very, very outgoing. Very yeah, cool guy. Taylor's speech at the end of Homestray Cup nailed it. I'm not even going to try and repeat it. You should just go look it up. Yeah. But, uh, at any rate, one of the things we did see a little bit weird that last game... You had the engineering bay block. It was kind of annoying. It was kind of weird. Maybe that kind of affected Harsim's idea of aggression. I don't know. But the blink the blink option, while not such a bad option, just clearly didn't work out that game. And I think on Dust Towers, you're already limited by the map layout. It's not as conducive to blink as, say, Frost or King Sejong, like the older maps are. So right off the bat, I mean, they should be resonating glaives. I don't know if it'll be blink again right away. Yeah. If he is really worried about Major doing drops and crazy aggression, then we might see that blink come out. But, I mean, it's really... As you said, that, that dirty, crisp, clean macro is just so <laughs> cheesy, and I just yeah, see right. no reason to really jump to it. If Harstum was able to scout this, the fact that it was a um, factory, a 1 1 1 build after Command Center, so again, not really cheesy at all, he might go for Blink just because you have so few units when you do this, especially if you do move out with the Widow Mine drop that even like light pressure can actually do some damage. You've certainly seen one or two blink all ins on this map. But I think if he chose it to be okay, be like a macro game, then yeah, something else, whether it's Resident Glaives or in this case a Stargate, would be would be better off. You know, Blink's never like terrible to have, but uh, as we saw last game, Blink stalkers don't really add up against bio with stim and medivax, and it, it requires a little bit of finesse, which for whatever reason, Harsom was missing last game. He usually has it. Obviously, he won, wins a bunch of shit all the time. But whatever, whatever happened last game, <clears throat> I hope he's getting over. Unfortunately, this Indigirim Bay block is a lot more healthier, a lot healthier than it was last game. I think last game was only like not even 50% before he killed the SCV. So this is gonna take quite a while. Um, I, the SCV scout the Stargate, I guess, is a lot more important though. It did. 
So that's that's that was actually a really nice SCV. It did everything it wanted to. Who needs a Reaper anyways? Right? No, it just gets no two shot anyway. by everything, like overcharged depths, oracles. Pfft. Yeah. And it, I mean, it is important to note, I feel like because there was no Reaper and, you know, Harrison figured that out pretty quickly as, you know, the Reaper wasn't coming to attack him, he knows that it's got to be, you know, that that reactor came down pretty fast and it might be something a little more aggressive, like a drop, like a 1-1-1 one, one, one build. I didn't expect the tank, I'm going to be completely honest, so that Oracle scouting that's going to be pretty important. Because that is vastly different than them going for Widow Mine Drop, which is, you know, entirely harassment based and you just have to try not to lose probes to it. If it's going to be a tank, and it's not because Major is afraid of being attacked, it's not an offensive tank, then yeah, it's going to be a frontal push, which is going to need more than just good Micron probes to deal with. It's going to need actual units. It's going to be oh, followed up by a Cyclone and a Liberator. The yeah. Oracle flying alongside the army looks a little bit funny. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's the surprise. Escort. It's it's not using Revelate or Revelation, I guess, because it actually might want to help out with the defense. There's really not that many Marines, and they don't have Stim, so the Oracles really could help out. I kind of like that. Well, Tank, unfortunately, is unloaded in the range of the pylons. It takes a couple of nasty shots already. This amount of Marines is going to struggle to deal with the Adepts. Maybe if the Tank had some shots off, but there's still the issue of these Oracles, of course. I love the turret, actually. It's, it looks silly, it almost looks trolly, but I like that turret a lot. Yeah, in the same way that I like that Harstam is using his oracles, I like that Major realized he'd be using his oracles. Yeah, the Cyclone, by the way, gonna be really nasty if it's a lock on this mothership. Corn, there it is! Ah, that's no us. more overcharges available. Harstam, oh god. He's in a lot of trouble already. Yeah, this really isn't enough adepts, and a bunker's coming down. A void ray, I remember seeing on the production tab, that was a fine choice. Unfortunately, it gets a little caught up on Marines. Double and of course, with the missile turret there, it wouldn't have been, yeah, it wouldn't be able to sit over everything it wanted to anyway. Yeah, I mean, if the Cyclone got the lock on, that's nasty. We got a bunker coming down. I mean, Major is a builder, by the way. There are. He's a builder. He, there's so many times where he's done this, right? Like, he puts bunker and pushes versus Zerg. He's got a turret down and bunkers now versus Protoss. Okay, the bunker doesn't finish. I thought it would, but still. Two Cyclones, a third one on the way. That Void Ray might be able to kill one of these, but probably not both, and that's the problem. Lock-on goes on to the Void Ray, it almost dies. That tank has no health and that Liberator's got it covered. This game is definitely going in the favor of Major, no doubt about it. Yeah, I mean, it's look back at CC home. Too. Right, third CC, production not coming down. I mean, sure, he's, he's missing stim and combat shields for some time, but he's certainly getting uh, worth out of this push, out of this delay on that. So in fact, he's gonna get the third huh? Nexus. He already got nine probes from it. Does this one of the Cyclones, unfortunately. He does need to keep these alive. They're his strongest assets. I was surprised the Liberty actually didn't advance forward enough to cover the ramp. He's inch it up a little bit, as we saw. But anyways, new Cyclone joins that front line. If he kills that Void Ray, there's really nothing left to worry about. He wants that Focus Fire, gets the lock on once again. Another Liberator sets up too. That Void Ray gonna go down too. Oh, <laughs> never mind, broke it. Broke it at the last second. That was very Turn close. Oh, is that a new Void Ray? Yeah, it is. Oh, well, not okay. You're well, good. he does take out the tank, which is kind of a big deal, but it might be a little too late. Yeah. I'm really surprised with how long it's been since the SUV died that he didn't just bring one or two more back over. Repair the tank. The yeah, finish off the bunker. Yeah, like anything. It looks oh, like... Lock on. That Void Ray's dead. That sucks about the Void Ray, because Void Rays are very, very expensive. But I was like, okay, maybe you can save the Nexus, but not anymore. The Cyclone just run past. The Marines uh, might be able to get it themselves. <laughs> Uh, Metamech, please. No, okay, the Metamech should have lived for certain. Uh, two stalkers will trade out. Oh, just one, but still. Major's attack is stopped. This was pretty big dedication. As we look back, Major has very little army supply to fall back on off, off of this, but losing that third was huge for Hearthstone. Yeah, and the probes along with it, you know, a lot of army. I mean, everything went down, and while his army looks, you know, okay, it's it's really not. You know, he opened up with that Stargates, and it helped him with the Void Rays, I suppose, and the Oracles helped out a little bit, but he doesn't have, like, Blink and Resident Glaives already done while defending, you know? He's just now getting his Twilight Council up, he's going for Double Forge, I guess, to kind of make up time. Because, I, I mean, Major had good micro behind it. It's not like... Harson's gonna have forever to 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 get whatever he wants. Now oh, Sim's uh, almost done. Combat Shields is also on the way actually because double tech lab and Harson is going to have to fit a lot of things into a very small time frame to get to that good army against uh, mass bio with Menavax. 
I guess I've water found a new use in life. Anti-drop defense? Not a bad idea. Oracle, I'm gonna guess just for revelation, because missile turrets have been up for some time. Oh, don't fly into that bio. Oh. Well, not a great thing for Harsim. Uh Upgrades, by the way, tend to just be really major favorite going into this fight. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna have 1-1 uh, one, one by the time he engages. Is Major, like, chronoing both of them? Okay, he's chronoing one of them. Maybe he'll have plus one, depending on how long Major waits to attack in here. And it looks like, even without, like, a lot of folks in overcharges, it's like, just a good enough army against the small one that Major has here. Uh, but, of course, Major is rallying forward. He's got, like, a very good SEV count, up by 10 to uh, Hearthstone. I keep on calling him Bales, actually. Cause I Bales. know, like, it's... it's... <laughs> Uh, it's Protoss as well, it doesn't help. It does not help at all. Uh, the engagement, if the Woodamons get the Adept shots, then they're gonna be great. Remember, these Adepts really aren't fantastic. They're soaking damage, which is like, usually their main benefit, but they don't have Resident Angle Glaive, so they're adding a lot of damage. And if those Blink Stalkers are pounce upon, they can't really retreat without that Blink, and Rotter Slow is done. So this is a very I, scary I, scenario. I will give it to Harsum. Like, the army's a lot bigger than I thought it would be for this fight, and he's recovered a lot better off of that attack from earlier than expected but as you see for major if you were to just back away right now and wait for that rest the rest of his army to join i think he'd stomp this like he's trading out not badly with small amounts of units get the rest of everything here together get the widow mines in on the fight there we go round two of the marauders coming in he needs these marines to live to take out that void ray yeah he does <laughs> yeah either a little bit of f2 remember they avoided to try and help and he does need the marines for it but so many marauders taking out those stalkers very very quickly widow mines haven't even really been played in this in this well, fight so far so Revelation was cast, and that was a bit of a problem. He scanned to see if there was an observer. There wasn't. So now there's no problem, as these widow mines can't be detected for quite some time. Yeah. You can try and inch them forward now, too, while they're under cover of the Liberator, and then they'll cover the Liberators in turn from being blinked under. Not that that would be a great idea anyways, with how much bio there is. But, I mean, fourth base to over here, on location, really nothing to be scared of. Harsom's trying to get to a disruptor, and that could certainly help take a good chunk 20 army supply away if, if Major's not paying attention. But it is, as always, you know, that, that one trick pony. It's got one hit, kills a widow mine, and that's that's gone for some time. Well, even without the widow mines, once again, Marauders are pretty freaking good units, and uh, sniping off these stalkers is proving not to be too problematic. Mm, it's the immortal. Uh, Void Ray can add quite a bit of damage. In fact, taking out the Medivacs isn't that bad of a use of the Void Ray, but the Blink Stalkers just really cannot stand up against what is now basically mass water. Ah, Disruptor coming in, though. You can't really outrun this bad boy. Gets the uh, Widow Mind to start. Yeah. Could have better. If this was double Orbo pumping Disruptors, I'd be like, okay, you might have four soon enough. I but like... One at a time. Yeah, this is it's a small but important detail. Major's Oof. not overstimming here. We normally see a lot of Terran do this and make huge mistakes in doing so. Chi Chi gets called, but I mean, right there at the end, it, it was, it's so tempting to just stim that Nexus down, but very important that he didn't. GG, well played by Major. Yeah. All right, so he'll advance on to the round of eight, where Bly and Kalazero are already waiting. We still have a round of 16 match being held up. Healer versus Wardix. I am at, if Wardix is Zuri, then I think I know what's going on. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think I have an idea too. But uh, congratulations to Major. Bottom side of the bracket, of course, you get Snoot versus Keen playing out. Killers are waiting, as you said, and of course, Bly up there. We'll see what matches are available to us. We're going to go to our first commercial break of the day. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back in a couple of minutes.